Hello and welcome to the Thursday, July 18th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Washington, D.C. When you're taking a look at our honeypot logs on our webpage, one type of URL that really sticks out for how frequently it is requested are URLs around environment variables like .env. Today we had a great write-up by one of our undergraduate interns, Michael Gallant, who did follow up a little bit on these scans and link them to the Antrox ghost uh, malware. This particular malware identifies itself with a user agent string of Antrox ghost. So nothing here really done to evade any kind of defenses. And in addition to looking for these environment files, it's also looking for a number of common, even though somewhat older PHP vulnerabilities, like the famous PHP unit vulnerability, also a Laravel app key deserialization vulnerability, as well as other vulnerabilities that have been exploited for a while. Interesting to see that this particular spike in .env scan may be somewhat related to this malware. Of course, there's no telling if other malware is going after these files as well. And then we got a critical Cisco vulnerability to talk about. It received a perfect CVSS score of 10 and it is an account takeover vulnerability in the Cisco Smart Software Manager. This particular vulnerability allows an unauthenticated attacker to change passwords for any account on the system, including the administrator, which of course then makes it trivial for an attacker to become administrator. Apparently the vulnerability is in the change password process and Cisco did release an update. In order to exploit the vulnerability, an attacker will need access to the HTTP interface of your smart software manager. And then we got a second noteworthy Cisco vulnerability. This one is in Cisco's secure email gateway, CVSS score of 9.8 for this one. The vulnerability is triggered by sending a specially crafted email attachment through the device. The scanning of email attachments contains the vulnerability. And as a result of uh, successfully exploiting this vulnerability, an attacker could overwrite any file of this system. Doesn't say it here in the advisor as far as I can tell, but this sounds very much like some kind of compressed file issue where files are being exploded and the system doesn't properly verify what directories they are exploded into. There have been a number of vulnerabilities, sort of directory traversal style vulnerabilities in various decompression tools. So that's at least my guess that it's something related like this. And of course, by overriding any file of the system, the attacker can then easily, for example, add users, modify in configurations, or execute arbitrary code. And Microsoft announced that they will change the process with which they will release Windows updates, starting with Windows 11 24H2. What they will be introducing is something they're calling checkpoint cumulative updates. The idea of these updates, if I got it right, and you'll of course find the link to the original blog post in the show notes, is that whenever there is a new larger version of Windows introduced, they will release a checkpoint cumulative update that does include all the security patches up to that version of Windows. And then each month you'll find smaller incremental updates that will just fix specific vulnerabilities that have been discovered since the last checkpoint cumulative update. Sounds like an interesting approach where basically you ever so often bring everybody onto the exact same software version using these checkpoint updates and then only apply smaller updates as needed. We'll see how it all works out. I'm not myself patching and managing enough Windows systems to really sort of comment on whether or not that will cause more problems or solve problems. 
Then we got a new update for GeoServer that does fix a critical remote code execution vulnerability that apparently is already being exploited. We have seen scans for GeoServer in the past, which is why I mentioned this. GeoServer is a tool that does allow you to manipulate, uh, well, geographic data, GIS data. And this particular vulnerability is triggered by the evaluating of XPath expressions. So essentially parsing XML data, which you often use for these kind of geographic APIs. Definitely something that you want to patch and uh, probably also evaluate if any of these uh, geo server instances are being exposed. Like I said in the past, we have seen quite a bit of scanning for this, but it usually didn't necessarily exploit particular vulnerabilities, but just missing or weak authentication. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.